Hello everyone. Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. Basically, in today's lecture, we are going to start with the fifth chapter that is road and track testing. Basically, in this particular chapter, we are going to discuss about the different test tracks on which our vehicle testing is been done. But apart from that particular topic, we are also going to discuss about the number of different things such as the types of inspections, what is PDI. That part will be discussed first, then after we are going to shift towards this particular main topic that is a road and track testing. So let's get started with the first topic that is inspection. Whenever we talk about this word inspection, we are very clear that we are checking that object against some standards, we are verifying that this particular thing is ok or not, that is nothing but it is inspection. But when we talk about our automobile inspection, that story is somewhat different. Basically, let us understand that particular topic along with the variety of inspections which we are going to understand. So, as far our automobile is concerned, we are having this four different types of inspection, initial inspection, renewal inspection, modification inspection and the fourth one is a roadside inspection. First of all, let us understand what does this initial inspection means. Any vehicle which is actually being sold into the market is first of all inspected. Who actually performs that inspection? We normally call that inspection happens at the RTO side. RTO initially issues a permission of 15 years that this vehicle can be driven in this uh, road condition of for a 15 year period of time. So, that particular inspection is nothing but initial inspection which certifies that vehicle can be driven for next 15 years. But this whenever this particular 15 year of span has been expired then we are going to go for this particular second category of inspection that is a renewal inspection. We need to renew that particular vehicle again after inspecting the vehicle that is nothing but it is a renewal inspection. The third category is a modification inspection. From the name itself you will get the idea that what does this modification inspection is. Some of the time you might have heard that some of the car modification has been done. I think so in India DC motors are very famous for that. Right. Apart from that, you may have also noted while driving in any of the road conditions, some of the vehicle you may face that has been modified. So, obviously, you are making changes to the length, width and height of that main vehicle. So, that kind of vehicle in which the modification has been happened, that vehicles need to be inspected again that categorized under this third category. The fourth category is the roadside inspection. This normally RTO carries out under the road uh, at some of the junctions and they will check that all the vehicles are having properly or inspected or not. Some of the time the incidents may have happened in certain years back that is almost two years back I had heard of an incident that the limousine kind of vehicle was running in our Indian road condition and that was actually used for marriage purpose. But that was not inspected, that had not even cleared this modification inspection norms. So, such kind of vehicle inspection will be caught at the roadside. So, that category is nothing but it is a roadside inspection. So, that is all about the inspection topic. Now, let us understand the second and the very most important topic that is a pre-delivery inspection. Pre-delivery inspection from the name itself you will get the idea that before taking the delivery of the vehicle we need to go for the inspection that is nothing but it is a pre-delivery inspection. Normally who does carry out this particular pre-delivery inspection? It is been carried out by the dealer itself before selling that particular vehicle to the customer. It is carried by the dealer what we are checking during that PDI that is a odometer reading that it is ok or not. Normally, it is been said that if odometer reading is showing the 100 kilometer then it is considered ok. It should not be even 0 because vehicle has been traveled from this storage area to the particular showroom. So, obviously, the vehicle is driven at least 5 or 10 kilometers, but the acceptable limit is 100 kilometer. Then we are doing the 360 degree examination. The dealer will do the 360 degree examination before 
handing over that particular car to the customer right in that particular part the scratches overall the examination of the body each and every component and its detailing would be checked out in the 360 degree examination then the checking of vehicle identification number as a nameplate wouldn't be there whenever we are taking a new vehicle so it will be identified by the vin number itself that is a vehicle identification number so in that particular invoice which we are the generate they are generating that number must be matched with the in a vehicle which the customer is taking delivery another aspect which is been checked is the mirrors and windows part hydraulics of the boot because nowadays almost all of the all of the cars are coming with the boot door having hydraulics so that part need to be checked because many of the incidents happens where there is a leakage of these hydraulic components as well as there is a malfunctioning of that particular part so that also is required to be checked by the dealer then the remote and the manual locking condition most of the cars is having one remote lock key and another is a normal key in most of the scenario nowadays that is also been changing but still that functioning would be checked by the dealer itself then abc pedals that is accelerator brake and clutch pedals conditions would also be monitored by the dealer itself so that's all about the pdi check now let us discuss about the next topic that is uh, engine durability by the word engine durability you will get the idea that we are doing this particular test to check the durability of the engine but what part need to be checked and why it is required that detailing we will take over in this particular topic first of all the fracture of the particular any of the component would be checked at what particular time this particular get ruptures this particular component get fracture that will be evaluated in the dur engine durability test the thermo mechanical failures as the engine is subjected to the high heat so obviously there are certain chances of development of thermal stresses and that can lead to the mechanical failure so that part can also be evaluated under this particular engine durability topic the another aspect is the cavitation in the cylinder line fuel system and the cooling system right this is a wide topic but right now just we are taking in consideration as a point in the engine durability this part is also been checked under the engine durability then the conditions of the accelerator brake and clutch pedals the response the engine resource because of the pressing of that pedal that would also be checked under this another aspect is the wear and the lubricant oil that how long does that sustains and what is the effect of that on the engine then the exhaust gas recirculation part then the turbocharger position that and the condition of operating of that particular turbocharger would also be checked under the engine durability and another one is a tribology tribology is actually a study of uh, the fundamentals which is related to the vibrations so this is again a wide topic but as the engine is having a lot of lot of components which is subjected to this wear and tear as well as they are in constant motion so they are having a huge chances of development of the vibration so that study would also be carried out under the tribology part let us take one more topic that is a uh, intensive driving in order to understand this particular word intensive driving i had just written one suffix that it is a just a careful driving habit a good driving habit that is nothing but it is a intensive driving so which are the points need to be taken into consideration when we talk about the intensive driving is the first one that is a uh, proper indicating whenever you are taking a turn you need to have proper indication you need to have proper look around whenever you are driving another aspect is don't bend the rules each and every country is uh, having own rules according to that the driver should respond so you not not need to break the rules and another one is a carefulness that is the alertness you need to have a all the three mirror views whenever you are changing the lane the last topic is the hill climbing hill climbing is again a detailed topic but as far our curriculum is concerned of vehicle testing and homologation normally we are just discussing this particular topic in a brief 
what is hill climbing hill climbing is a actually situation whenever you are driving across a hill but obviously there would be uh, two conditions that is uphill and downhill condition so what things you actually need to keep on a mind that we are going to discuss it right now but this particular diagram is actually well indicating one thing that whenever you are traveling across a hill you need to have an idea about the lane driving you does not need to go for the interchanging of the lanes whenever you are driving in a perfect lane then there is actually the least possibility of the accident you does not need to go for in a hurry or in a to not to take the overtake in the particular hill climbing condition so let us come to the two points which i was actually discussing about that there are two different stages first one is uphill condition second one is a downhill condition if we look, look towards this both scenario i had just taken one uh, graphics of both that just in order to explain that both the conditions itself is a risky condition because in the uphill condition if you are need to slow down in any of the state then there is a chances that you need to go back and if whenever you are taking in a downhill condition you just need to see this particular condition of the bus some of the times we may assume that to travel in downhill it is still good but sometimes whenever the road are curve then that kind of possibility is also having to lead to the accident so you need to take care of both the condition but as i told you need to practice the lane driving as well as the brake pedals must be operated in a proper time so that's all about that particular hill climbing topic we are keeping up to this in this particular presentation and we are going to con continue with the road and track testing in detail in the next lecture finally thanks for watching